So it's just a quick video for Sylvia to show how to connect a Power Apps screen, um, button, whatever it is, to a Power Automate flow. And in this context, this example, what we're doing is we're connecting to a flow that we've created using the Add Flow option inside Power Apps. Effectively, it's a contained flow that we've got. Let me just show you the flow itself. So um, it's badly named. We could rename it if we chose to. But when I open it up, we have the Power Apps V2. Um, trigger which is what it gives us bit by default we've got an input variable which is an id could be anything but it's a text variable bear that in mind we've then got a compose and you'll see here this compose does a little expression it concatenates the text that we receive that first value when you build this you're basically selecting dynamic content so you do concat and then you choose dynamic content choose the input variable and then put a comma and i've got one two three four just to prove that this is working and then as an output, this is the key to it, do use the respond to an app or a flow, which you've already used. And we just pass the output from the compose. So it's really, really simple. You could effectively do all sorts of clever stuff. Here's, here's a tip. When you click save, you it will take a little while to save, but we'll close this flow down. And what you're gonna see is that the Power App itself thinks you've got an error. It's just because what happens is it does some synchronization between the flow and the power app at that point. So there you go, it's given those two little red dots. Don't worry, look on the left, you'll see it's loading. What it's doing is it's tying everything together again for you. So don't worry if you play with your flow and you get errors, give it a moment. When you've done that, let me just show you the formula. This is a simple label, it's got text in it. This sets a variable as you did to the outcome from calling the compose, that uh, Power Automate flow, dot run, which is what you've done. But the difference here, when I built it, and when you build it, you may spot this. In fact, let me try and show it to you. Uh, let me just try and show this. So we run the, the run action. Do you notice that there? We get this expected input parameter. What it's basically saying is, what do you want to pass in as that first input parameter? So we're going to set the text and notice the curly brackets to be, for me, uh, it'd be label.3, I think it is. Now I've named them properly now. LBL, uh, input text, again using this enumeration technique, dot text. So get the text of that label. You can see it's highlighted it green so it's worked. Okay. Don't forget to close those squiggly brackets. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, it looks like I'm missing a bracket, so I'll add the bracket there. That's all I need to do. The other thing I've got on here is another label. Again, I'm using the variable, but I'm using the dot .output property. So I think the problem you were having, Sylvia, is that this was not quite properly formed. So use that syntax that I've just showed you there. Let me just zoom up so it's a bit easier. Let's see if I can zoom up. Can I zoom up? I can. There we go use that kind of syntax. So the input the input variable, colon, and then the item you're gonna to give to that input variable. Let's give it a go. Press Alt, boom. So what's happened is it's taken the word text, it's added one, two, three, four, and it's stuck it into that label. That should be the process that you need. I hope it works.